So all the countries are now thinking about what they're going to contribute to the COP agreement. And we're all waiting with bated breath to, to see what comes out of it. Of course, with Copenhagen, it was all a huge disappointment in the sense we'd all hoped or we all sort of expected something to come out of it. And it was a great big nothing. It was so disappointing. So expectations are much lower this time. I think um, we've uh, well been working much more carefully to try and make sure that something comes out at the end. But the, the whole sort of following wind has been so positive that now the expectations are getting higher and higher that something, something will happen. So it's a bit of a sort of game to play, not being too hopeful, but being quite optimistic. The, the general aim, of course, is for the countries to commit to reduction in CO2 such that the globe will be on a path to a two degree um, rise in temperatures. It's very unlikely that, that that will be achieved. And so what we need to do is think um, of other benefits to come out of this meeting that are not necessarily just, I say just, but just the CO2 um, reductions. And those sort of things will be um, the uh, appreciation that this needs to be done, the ability for different countries to talk to each other and negotiate and work together to improve the world. So even if we come out of the end of, of the Paris meeting, with uh, an agreement, but it's not going to hit the two degree target. Um, it may be that there's positive things coming out in, in the agenda for the way forward. So in the UK, we've had the, the carbon budget and we've got the five year carbon budgets and we've managed to hit the first one. And of course it gets increasingly challenging as they go ahead. And um, we are committed to doing it. And of course it gets more and more difficult as you go into the future. And there's a number of ways in which we can address these issues, uh, increasing amounts of um, renewable energy sources, possibly moving to more nuclear energy. And it's a mixed bag of actions. Every, every place in the world, of course, is different and, and every country will have its own way of going about it. But I think it's establishing that there's a, a, a road that we're all following that we want to get towards, which is having uh, lower CO2 emissions and how we do it is really it's a sort of nitty gritty. Well, I think we need everybody to step up to the plate in order to make sure that this happens. But clearly the countries that have not been responsible for producing the CO2 in the past need to be considered in a different way to those of us that, that have been doing it. And I think one of the most um, remarkable things that's happened recently has been the announcement by China alongside the US that they will be trying to reduce their carbon dioxide, that they'll peak their emissions before 2030. And if we can do anything to help that, um, than we should be. How it's done, of course, is, is difficult. Perhaps there's carbon pricing or carbon trading or, or some of these things. Um, in, in the um, scenarios produced by the United Nations, of course, it, even the uh, most reasonable ones to get us below the two degrees target requires some negative emissions. So it does require there to be uh, carbon capture or something like that to be happening um, decades ahead. And we're well behind on the technology. So it needs to be a lot of work done on that.